Hi, welcome to The Peaceful Home. Today we're gonna to deal with a parenting issue that was sent in by a viewer. Hi, Teresa, I was looking through your videos on YouTube and didn't see what I was looking for. Have you ever covered the topic of how to handle it when your children take advantage of a parent being distracted on the phone, at the door, etc., to misbehave? This is a great question and we're gonna talk about it today. I'm Teresa Elling, if we haven't met, and I'm glad you're here. I'm assuming that you want to hear what I have to say about this topic. Now, I enjoy doing these very informal kind of podcast style videos where I don't really have a clear plan, but I'm just going to do my best to answer a viewer question. So there are a couple of things to consider when you're dealing with this behavior. Um, you're in the middle of a phone call and your child knows that you're busy and they're gonna do something naughty. Or you're talking to someone at the front door and they take that time to interrupt, to cause a scene, to just make it difficult for you to have your conversation. Or maybe you're up to your elbows in dough in the kitchen and they go start getting something out of the cabinet they're not allowed to have. How do you handle these situations? Well, first of all, a couple of things to just consider is that we need to be better about not multitasking all of the time. We think that we can be on our phone, be making soup on the stove and keeping an eye on our kids at the same time. And often that's true, but when our child is doing something they shouldn't be or doing something possibly to endanger themselves or others, we need to be able to respond quickly. We also have to be disciplined about our phones. It's so important that we have set times to be on our phone, that it's not an all day thing because our children really learn to tune us out. They basically feel like they're alone. You might be right there in the room, but you're not there. So I suggest that you have very set times. For example, when your child is napping or having a quiet time or you know, maybe it's um, right after breakfast when your child is happily playing, but it's very intentional and you say, okay, my children are occupied and this is a good time for me to be on my phone. We have to have enough of a presence of mind to know where our children are, to know when it's a little too quiet <laughs> and you're wondering what they're getting into. Hopefully there isn't time when they're off on their own for too long. When you have a child that ends up being naughty because you're distracted, you need to keep a couple of things in mind. First of all, always deal with it. Don't ever be tempted to just ignore it and leave it alone. Um, I have previous video videos that talk about negative training. I will post those below in the description box so you can take a look. But negative training, it's not intentional on our part, but it might as well be. It is so effective at training our children in a negative way. So that happens in two ways. One, there is no consequence or a meaningless consequence. And so the child just learns, well, so what? I'll have to go to timeout. I don't care. And it doesn't train them to do the right thing because the consequence either isn't there or it's insufficient. And the second thing is when they actually get a reward for negative behavior. Now you might be thinking, why would I reward a child for negative behavior? But let me give you a scenario. Let's say that um, every time you're on the phone, your child comes up whining and crying and needing your attention. And you say, stop, I'm on the phone. And they continue go play i'm on the phone they continue here i'll get out you know your play-doh they continue okay i'm putting on a show for you just sit here and be quiet and they're fine if they want to watch a show you just trained them how to get what they want let's say that you do no screens for the bulk of the day but your child quickly learns that if you're on the phone he can watch something if he bugs you enough. He's actually being rewarded for his misbehavior. That's negative training. 
So it's absolutely crucial that there is a consequence for each negative behavior. Now, of course, this is a simplification. This is not considering grace. It's not considering other decisions that come into play here, other circumstances. But for the most part, when you're trying to weed out a particularly bad behavior, you need to be consistent. It's really not the time for grace. I would say what most people say is grace, which is I'm not going to have a consequence for you. You can misbehave and I'm not going to do anything. That is not going to properly train our children. One of the ways that children reach out to tell us that they need more from us, I actually have a video on filling your child's emotional tank. And when they need us, they will misbehave to get our attention. So we need to be aware of that. As moms, we have to be willing to prioritize our children, even if it means we get off the phone, we end a conversation. They have to be top priority. And so if you're on the phone with your sister or your mom, and even in the middle of a really great conversation, you need to be willing to say, hey, mom, I've gotta go, talk to you later. Call you back in five minutes, whatever it is. Your child needs to see that you're willing to get off the phone because they need you and that you're even willing to get off the phone to deal with their misbehavior. Now, there's also real life and there's times when it's very difficult to get off the phone, to remove yourself from a situation. What if a police officer shows up at your door and says, we had an issue going on down the block and I need to discuss it with you. That's not exactly a time that you can say, excuse me, officer, I need to go deal with my two-year-old. I mean, of course, in an emergency, that's what you would have to do, but you would feel like, okay, I really need to pay attention here. I need to let this go. Whatever my toddler is doing, they're drawing on the wall right now and I can see it and I'm just going to ignore it and I'm gonna pay attention to the officer. Thank you very much, have a good day, close the door. Now I need to deal with my toddler. And again, bringing it back to always deal with it. Don't ever push it to the side. So let's imagine that you are making bread and you've got dough up your arms and you're in the, right in the middle of something and you've got to finish it and you can see that your child is misbehaving. For one thing, don't give them a command because you can't follow up immediately. Let it go, finish what you're doing, and then go over and address it. And what I would recommend is that first you put them in a thinking spot. My daughter calls it the thoughtful spot after Pooh Bear. So if they're in their thoughtful spot, you can say, hey, I want you to sit here because is it okay for you to draw on the wall with marker? No, okay, I want you to sit and think about what you've done. Give them some time to calm down, give yourself time to calm down, and then approach them again. Are they ready to talk? Is their heart soft? Are they willing to apologize? Um, and then with all of that, which is good, and it's what you want, and it's what you need, that's the purpose of a timeout, if you will. But that's not the consequence. The consequence comes afterwards. So what is the consequence of writing on the wall? Well, we're gonna put away markers for the next two days, no coloring, and you need to help mom clean up your mess. And they're gonna go and they're gonna help it, you scrub it down. You know the best consequences for your children. Um, they really vary. For some kids, a timeout, they're fine. I'll sit in timeout for an hour, I don't care. It's not a good consequence for that child. Other kids can't stand to be removed from the activity. And a five minute time out, it just feels like it's gonna kill them. It's just so hard. So that's probably a good consequence for that child because it means something. Now what happens if you get away from the door, you get off the phone, you clean up your mess in the kitchen, and you walk over and your child that was just getting into the M&Ms is now sitting quietly playing with blocks. Often we're tempted to go, well, it's good now. I'm just gonna let it go. If you do that, you're negatively training your child to disobey in the hopes that you won't do anything. So always follow up. 
I would still interrupt their play. Hey, buddy, we need to talk. Come over here, please. Do you remember when mom was on the phone and you went and you snuck some M&Ms and you need to talk it through? Then if they're willing to apologize and their heart is soft, then you can say, okay, what needs to be the consequence? Maybe they're gonna do an extra chore for you or be in timeout or whatever it is that you decide. Once you've done that, you're still not done. There still needs to be follow-up. And I would encourage a follow-up conversation, maybe at the dinner table, maybe at bedtime. Hey bud, do you remember today when mom was on the phone and you got into, you know, whatever? Yes. Okay, tell me how we're gonna handle that next time. Just talking it through, apart from the actual incident, hours later, is going to help their little brains to grasp the concepts better, help them to learn, help them to remember. It's really crucial to talk about it um, at a different time and without all the emotions of the moment. Lastly, you may need to do some more training. If you don't uh, do quiet time with your children, I cannot recommend it enough for all ages. But a huge part of quiet time isn't just the actual quiet time, it's the discipline of when mom says, hey guys, time to go to quiet time, that they go. They know where to go, they're in their room, they know what to do. And you now have time to do whatever you need to do. And that comes in really handy, um, especially in cases of emergency. Let's say that a friend just popped over and she is in crisis, in tears, and she sits down at your dining room table. You can tell your children, guys, please go to quiet time. I'll set your timer and they will go. Um, it is possible. I know there's probably some of you that are thinking, my kid's not going to go anywhere. You absolutely can train them. I had six children. They were all trained in quiet time. They were also trained in what we called sit time. And sit time was that you would sit quietly and still whenever on command. So I'll give you an example of when we used it. We were purchasing our first home. We needed to go to the mortgage lender. My husband and I both had to be there to sign and we needed to take our children. And so we all march into the office and there's a nice row of chairs in the lobby. And I told the children, guys, please sit for sit time. And they each sat down in their chairs and they were just still and quiet. Um, you can give them a toy or a book. I mean, that's preferable, but they need to be trained to do a sit time even if they don't have anything to distract them. Now, obviously, if you're working with small children, you're doing this for 30 seconds, 60 seconds. You're working your way up to where the children can sit when needed in case of a crisis or an important meeting. You don't wanna overuse it. You aren't looking to have obedient children so that they're quiet and out of the way and you don't have to bother with them. <laughs> but there are rare occasions when you really do need them to be taken care of. And so it comes in really handy if you train for those things, train for sit time, train for quiet time. And then in a drastic situation, you have a way of having your child distracted, cared for, and you can do what you need to do. I'm sure I'm gonna think of several things uh, later today that I should have talked about, but that's all that I've got right now. So I would love your questions and comments below. If you're new to my channel, we talk about all things home and family. I would love to have you subscribe. Thank you so much for joining me today on The Peaceful Home. Have a great day.